For many photographers, fashion photography seems to be like the holy grail. Beautiful models, exotic locations, big budgets, glitzy magazine covers, and a life of luxury, excitement, and adventure. But the reality for most fashion photographers is far less glamorous. In this video, I'm going to explain why and what you can do to give yourself the best chance of success in creating your own impactful fashion images. Whilst fashion photography may seem incredibly appealing, it's worth realising that most fashion shoots are editorial and don't have the big budgets that many photographers dream of. Let's first explore some of the sub-genres of fashion photography. Editorial fashion photography, catalogue fashion photography, standard advertising fashion photography, high-end advertising fashion photography. Editorial fashion photography features in women's or men's magazines and usually include a series of images to describe what's on trend or to promote a certain label. These shoots may be in the studio but are also often on location and they have a loose narrative or theme associated with them to help create the series of images. Some shoots can be quite basic and others quite elaborate and very creative. But these are not the highest paid fashion shoots. Often budgets from the magazines for these are limited. And to make them work financially, you may need to work in collaboration with a number of service providers, such as the model, hair and makeup and stylist, who will offer you an editorial rate for their time. This they are often willing to do if the magazine is in good standing, as they consider the exposure from it worthwhile. Catalogue fashion is probably the next step up in the ladder in terms of overall financial reward. This would be where the photographer is shooting hundreds of outfit changes with several different models for printed clothes catalogues or online stores. Some may be a very simple white or studio background and others may be large location productions needing a full crew and with relatively decent budgets. Standard advertising fashion photography would be the next tier and would be a photo shoot aimed at arriving at one or two final images for use in advertising in magazines, online or other publications. These may be from smaller fashion or new labels that don't have the budgets of the big haute couture brands. These adverts may also appear in less known or less widely distributed publications. The photography can still be highly effective and of the highest quality. It just won't come with a $100,000 budget. High-end advertising fashion photography is of course the most lucrative and it is often reserved to just a handful of photographers globally. These are campaign shoots for the leading haute couture brands and the images will grace the pages of the top magazines such as Vogue and the shots will likely feature in department stores, airport display advertising and across many countries. This type of photography will command the highest budgets and will require usage rights for models and photographers as well as the funds for set builds, the best hair, the best makeup and some of the world's top models. Usually the photographers who shoot this have made a name for themselves and are often affiliated to a leading photographer's agency that deals mostly in this arena, such as art and commerce, art department, cadence image, or Jones management. So how can you work your way up the fashion photography ladder and what do you need to succeed? Where do you source outfits? How do you pose your model? How do you get the best lighting? These are all common questions. In addition to an extensive knowledge of lighting, you'll want to develop your own style, creative ideas, and you will need the ability to work with and manage a team. So to help you get started, I've put together this guide to answer some of the most commonly asked fashion photography questions. I've also provided top tips, some fashion photography lighting examples, as well as some set ideas. First up is how to plan a fashion shoot. Having a strong concept is a key part of a successful fashion shoot. Once you have your concept, the planning can begin. If you're working with a team, it's important to meet with everyone to discuss your concept and ideas. 
work through the narrative or theme for the shoot with the team members and get them on board and enthusiastic with your ideas. Remember, fashion shoots are a team effort and a collaboration between the model, hair and makeup, assistants and stylist. So it's essential that you work well together. Having an idea of the outfits that you want, or the sets and the locations, or the themes that will get the mood of your shoot across is essential. For this, I recommend having pre-drawn sketches and mood boards to share your ideas with the team so you can clearly communicate your goals. Fashion shoot props and sets. You don't necessarily need big fancy sets and elaborate props for fashion photography. Often they can be quite simple, but enough to carry the concept of the shoot through. Other times they need to be more elaborate and constructed, and on some of our fashion photography courses, I show you how to reuse the same set in a number of different ways by changing the emotion with light. Another simpler option is to create your own backdrops. This can be done simply and easily using items you can purchase from your local art and hardware stores. And we have another video on our channel that shows you how to do it. Sourcing outfits and working with fashion stylists. Working with a good stylist can make this stage of the planning much easier. For many of my fashion shoots, I work with a fashion stylist named Bianca Swan. A good fashion stylist will have contacts with the PR departments of different labels and can acquire outfits on loan. They often have relationships with fashion outlets and can source clothes there too. And they are in the know on upcoming labels that are keen for exposure. Other times I source clothes from Etsy or more personalized online stores, which allow you to pick up some bargains and quite unique pieces. I've even created fashion from my own homemade materials as I demonstrate in this popular class on Carl Taylor Education. And over the years, I've developed relationships directly with designers and brands in exchange for photos. Bianca talks extensively about her work as a stylist for big names like Rankin and Rachel Smith on one of my talk shows and gives some great advice on the industry. Working with models. There are a number of agencies that you can get in touch with about hiring models for fashion shoots. And it's important that you work with a model who is enthusiastic to your ideas and brief, as this will help really bring your concepts to life. Prices for hiring models depends on which agency you're hiring from. Directories such as Model Mayhem or Model Management include listings of independent models looking to build their portfolios. And you can usually hire models for a lower fee in exchange for images. For photographers working on a budget, looking to develop their skills and build their own portfolio, these are good places to start but I find it better to work with models from actual model agencies that have more experience. In the UK, agencies such as Sandra Reynolds, BMA Models, or Wild Management, you can hire good models for anywhere between 500 to 1,000 pound per day without too many restrictions on usage. Usage is where the model agency requires additional fees if the images are used beyond what was agreed or additional to the shoot fee. These are common in some of the other larger agencies. MOT Models is another good agency, though their prices generally fall around £1,000 or more per day. After that, and representing some of the more famous names in the industry, are agencies such as Storm, Next Management and Select Model Management. The prices there can start from about £2,000 and go heavily upwards. However, if you're a good photographer looking to do just test shots, then you can often negotiate much better rates, especially if it's for models from their new faces categories, as they are often keen to get those models more shoot experience. However, if you're working on a budget, professional fashion photographer Daria Balakova, who is another guest on our talk shows, said she often approached friends to model or use social media contacts to obtain models. There are also many independent models with their own websites where you can book them directly. Just remember to be professional when working with any model. They have a job to do just as you do, so be respectful and try to involve them in the shoot rather than command it. 
They are as keen to get great images as you are, so work with them to get the best results by getting them on board with your ideas and explaining what you want to achieve. I've worked with some of the toughest models on demanding shoots from ice cold weather to ice cold water to jumps, leaps in heels, splashes, strange expressions and unusual locations. But I've also always had a great relationship with all of them and know when they need a rest or break. You'll never get the best out of a model or your team if you're disrespectful. Maintain a confident control of the shoot so the team understand that you're in charge of things and get things done, but don't behave like a dictator. Makeup and hair. As well as clothes, a big part of the fashion shoot is the makeup and hair. I've worked with some great makeup artists and hairstylists over the years, and it's obviously important that who you choose is capable of doing the job. Any hair and makeup artist worth their salt should be able to show you a portfolio of previous work as a reference and ask to see Polaroids or snapshots that are not the retouched images so you can really see how good their work is. Often hair and makeup will be separate artists, but occasionally they can do both, which will reduce your costs, of course. Equipment. As with any genre of photography, I'm sure you're asking what camera is best for fashion photography or what lens do fashion photographers use. In our live talk show with Daria Belakova, she explains how she uses both Hasselblad and 35mm cameras for her work. Both do the job perfectly well, but with a medium format camera, it does require a slower shooting process. If you need to shoot more rapidly, then 35mm will likely be the better choice. Which lens is best depends on what you're trying to achieve, but both Daria and I find ourselves working with slightly wider angle lenses than is normal for beauty or portrait shots because you're often aiming for full length images of the model or trying to incorporate some of the environment or the set as part of the narrative. This is often at focal lengths equivalent to 35mm on a full frame 35mm camera, but maybe sometimes wider or slightly longer to around 50 or 60mm. Put simply, you can use almost any camera for fashion photography, but I prefer larger sensors for their low light capabilities. And I'd say you'll want at least 22 megapixels for most shots or more if the work is going to go big. Lighting setups for fashion shoots. Lighting plays a major role in fashion photography. Your lighting determines the mood and feel of your shot. It's what can make your image stand out above the rest. Fashion shoots are conducted with a variety of different lighting modifiers depending on the mood that is trying to be conveyed. Sometimes a single octobox and a canvas background is enough, and other times it might need a number of parabolic reflectors or specialist modifiers. But I have shot fashion images with nothing more than the cheapest modifier, a simple silver umbrella and one light. We have a wide range of fashion photography courses in our fashion and portrait sections that give a number of different lighting setup examples that you can try that range across a number of different lighting budgets. This bold yet soft lighting style, which is ideal for catalog shots, was achieved using just one light and is a versatile lighting setup that can easily be adapted to get different results. I've got examples from one light to lots of lights that you can enjoy on Carl Taylor Education. My favourite modifiers for fashion shoots are Broncolor parabolic modifiers as they provide a beautiful punchy light with good sculpting which helps reveal texture in fabrics. They're also versatile because they can be changed from hard to soft light but without looking too flat like large soft boxes for example. If you don't have the budget for parabolic lighting, then beauty dishes and umbrellas can be a good alternative. So how do you become a fashion photographer? Well, you have to start at the bottom and work your way up. You're not going to get signed by art and commerce if you haven't ever taken a fashion shot. To make it as a professional fashion photographer, it's important that your images say something that you have the ability to work well with a team and have a good knowledge of lighting. Here's some tips to help you along the way. 
Find an idea and get inspired by it. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Music, cinema, something you see in the street, or just random thoughts. Work with those ideas and develop them. Find a good location or build a good set or source good props. This is a very important aspect if you're going to get a successful final result. Be careful with props and locations that you don't turn your shots into a costume shoot rather than a fashion shoot. Prepare as best as you can. Use mood boards to present your ideas clearly to your future team. Build a team that you can work with. Concentrate on what type of shoot you're doing and choose the artists who will help you best achieve it. Collaborate and communicate on set. Never forget that you are the photographer, which means you are responsible for the whole shoot, the makeup, the hair, styling, and so on. It's a lot of responsibility and can put you under a lot of pressure, but maintain a warm and friendly atmosphere in your team. Make everyone feel comfortable and work with people who will help you do a good job. Team collaboration is probably the most important ingredient to success in fashion shoots. Well, I hope you found this information useful. Give us a thumbs up if you did, and thanks for watching. Get my completely free photography course with no sign up required. You can also access our free 90 page ebook. Just click the link or go to carltaylereducation.com.